Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking to you about cells. Not these kind of cells, or these kind of cells, but this kind of cell. The type of cell that you, and I, and every living thing are made up of. We're going to start by talking about how many cells are in the body, comparing that to how tiny they really are, we'll learn about what is in each cell that makes it work, and finally, how cells can be different from each other and how those different cells arise. Now, when we talk about the cells that make up your body, we're really talking about two different things. There are human cells, but then there are also bacterial cells or other microbial cells that live in or on your body that actually help you out. The number of human cells that are in your body that actually came from your own DNA or stem cells is around 30 to 38 trillion, depending on the size of the person. And of all of those human cells, approximately 80% are actually red blood cells. You have so many red blood cells in your body because they have such an important job. Whereas the number of bacterial or microbial cells that live on your skin or within your body is a little bit more than that, around 37 to 40 trillion cells. So that's a lot of cells and it's really hard for people to picture that. If you took only the ones that are human cells and not the microbial cells, if you took all of those cells, which are so tiny that you can't really see most of them, there are some that you can, that are large enough that you can, but most of them you can't. And if you took each of those tiny cells and you blew them up to the size of a grain of sand, all of those grains of sand, all of those cells that are the size of a grain of sand would take up two Olympic sized swimming pools. So you can really tell how small those are because sand grains are also very small, but cells are even smaller than that. Now those microbial cells that we talked about, they live on your skin and they mostly help you by outcompeting other harmful microbes. Or they live inside your intestines or your gut and they help you digest things but also outcompete other harmful microbes. Next we're going to go over the parts of cells that help them perform their functions. Just like you, an organism, have organs inside of you that help you do your job. Cells have things inside of them called organelles, so tiny organs, that help them perform their jobs within your body. The outer covering of a cell, just like the skin of the cell, is called the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is mostly made of lipids, specifically phospholipids, but also some cholesterol derivatives, as well as proteins embedded in. And just like your skin, it helps protect the cell. That's a physical barrier from things getting inside. The proteins that are embedded in the plasma membrane, they have different functions. They either help cells recognize each other, they help cells attach to things, they help cells let molecules in and out, or they can help transmit signals through cells. The plasma membrane also can help by scooping things in called endocytosis or letting substances out called exocytosis. Now, everything within the plasma membrane is called the cytoplasm. That includes all of the inside organelles. The liquid though that everything is suspended in is called the cytosol. Inside most cells is a nucleus. And what the nucleus is, it is a small circle or a small envelope that contains the DNA of the cell, the genetic material. What that means is those genetic material, the DNA, those are the genes or the instructions for your cells to make all of the proteins that your body needs to function. Now the DNA cannot leave the nucleus. There are small holes in it, but the DNA stays in the nucleus. The proteins actually get created outside of the nucleus. And so what needs to happen is that an enzyme called DNA polymerase gets into the nucleus, copies a specific gene whose protein needs to get made, and then that mRNA copy of that single gene leaves the nucleus. Next is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and it really just looks like a bunch of sheets kind of folded and stacked on top of each other. 
and it's where new lipids are made, new fats and oils, mostly phospholipids, but also things like cholesterol or cholesterol derivatives. Connected to the smooth ER and the nuclear envelope is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is different from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It looks rough under a microscope, and that's because there are little tiny ribosomes that are stuck on it, and it makes it look like it's got little bumps all over. Speaking of ribosomes, what ribosomes do is they take that strip of mRNA that was copied from the larger DNA section, the single gene that's copied, the mRNA, leaves the nucleus. Then a ribosome, it's two parts that kind of clamp on, and they read the message that's on the mRNA about how to make that gene, how to make that protein, and they pull in amino acids one at a time and they arrange them in the way to make that protein as they read through that band of messenger or mRNA. The ribosomes can either be free-floating where they would make proteins that would stay inside the cell, or they might be stuck on the rough endoplasmic reticulum as discussed earlier. If they are stuck on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, then the proteins that they make are going to go in the rough ER and are going to get transported out of the cell eventually. Before being transported out of the cell, proteins that are made on the rough ER will need to go to the Golgi apparatus, which again looks like a series of discs or flat sacs. And there, the proteins are finished. They have things snipped off, they have things added on before they are ready to be released from the cell or put on the cell's surface. Vesicle is a general term, and they're really just like little bubbles inside of the cell that contain things. It might contain things that the cell has taken in. They might be vesicles that are moving from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi or from the Golgi apparatus to the cell surface. And these vesicles are made of the same thing that the plasma membrane is made of. And they generally are like soap bubbles where if they come together, they might fuse. A specific type of vesicle is called a lysosome. And a lysosome is a vesicle, a bubble that contains digestive enzymes. And so if the cell pulls something in into another food vesicle, the lysosome can merge with it and the digestive enzymes will mix with that food source and digest it. The way that vesicles move around a cell is not just by floating, even though it looks like that in pictures. The way that they move around is by traveling along the cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton is just like our skeleton, except that in how our skeleton helps us to move and keep our shape, the cytoskeleton helps a cell keep its shape or move if it needs to. Cytoskeleton has a number of parts. There are microfilaments, which are made of a protein called actin, and they are just long strands. They help the cell keep its shape. There are microtubules, which are hollow. They're made of a protein called tubulin. And they generally are going to serve as tracks for things to move along. Then there are the centrioles, two centrioles together called the centrosome. Those also are made of tubulin and serve as the kind of starting site for the microtubules when the cell is dividing. As I said, microtubules help the vesicles move around a cell. They also can help the chromosomes uh, divide or move away from each other when the cell is dividing. As a microtubule, that long strand, that tract that vesicles are going to move along, the microtubules, there are vesicles, and the vesicles need to be pulled along those tracts. And what they're pulled along by are things called motor proteins. The two major motor proteins that carry vesicles from different places in the cell to where they're going are called kinesin and dynein. Kinesin carries things, carries vesicles, out from the middle of the cell. Dynein carries vesicles in toward the middle of the cell, depending on where the vesicle is going and what it's containing. Now we're going to cover three types of extensions from a cell, things that stick out of a cell. Those are cilia, flagella, and microvilli for human cells. Cilia are short finger-like extensions and they move, they kind of wave, and they all work together. 
they stick out into surfaces where uh, something needs to be moved over the surface of a tissue. You typically are going to see these in the airways and they move mucus over the airways that trap bacteria. So the mucus traps bacteria, the cilia moves the bacteria out of the lungs. Flagella are just one single long tail and they help a cell move from one place to another. In human cells, the only ones that have flagella are sperm cells. Microvilli are shorter and smaller than cilia and their job really is just to expand the surface area of the cell so that it can absorb nutrients. You typically see these or talk about them in terms of the intestines because the intestines need to absorb nutrients from what you've eaten. Now a crucial component, all of them really are crucial but these especially, uh, mitochondria. People typically talk about mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell. They don't create all of the cell's energy however. There are enzymes within the cytosol that can take a molecule of sugar and split it right down the middle and get some energy out. However, the two halves of the sugar molecule are going to create lactic acid. What mitochondria do, the singular is mitochondrion, what they do though is they're kind of like their own little cell within our cells. And what they do is they can take those sugar molecules and use oxygen to completely break them down. They create energy in the form of ATP and only release water and CO2 as byproducts instead of lactic acid. Without mitochondria, the cells to get energy, to get ATP, could only break down sugar molecules to create lactic acid to do that. Now, there are over 200 different types of specific cells within your body that differ in how they look and what chemicals they have in them. They differ in their morphology and their physiology. They might have a larger or smaller endoplasmic reticulum, or they might have a larger or smaller nucleus, or no nucleus at all. The most common cell in the body, red blood cells, actually do not have a nucleus. They eject their nucleus so that they can better perform their function. Now, the picture that you usually see for cells, animal cells, human cells, uh, the typical picture that you see at the beginning of the textbook is called a composite cell, where they kind of try to get all of those organelles in the same picture as possible. But there are no real cells that look like that in the body, because a composite cell generally has a flagellum, but the only cells in the body that have a flagellum would be sperm cells. And a sperm cell doesn't have cilia or microvilli, like the composite cell does. So specific cell types have some of those organelles, maybe exaggerated more than others, but they wouldn't have all of them. So there are specific cells, like I said, red blood cell, there are multipolar neurons, there are skeletal muscle cells, there are B lymphocytes that produce antibodies, like the ones that attack viruses. And they all differ in how they look and what they have in them that let them perform their specific function in your body. Those different cell types all arose from things called stem cells. They're called stem cells not because they're interested in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but if you picture a tree, like all of the cell types out here, they all came from a stem cell. So a stem cell can copy itself and make another stem cell, but stem means that they could create any of the cell types. A pluripotent stem cell will partly develop into different multipotent stem cells, and then those will then further develop into the specific cell types. So I know this was a lot. Hopefully it's been clear. We'll watch some videos. We'll do some class discussion about all of these things. Uh, feel free to ask questions of your instructor for clarification. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in class.